sometimes when there's like head coaching openings um, in the NBA, your name comes up. Would you ever consider it? Uh, like, I'm not really passionate about that. Like, I've never been, like, I've never wanted to jump even to the WNBA. Like, I, I, there's something about college basketball, like being able to be a dream merchant for young people. There's something about that that, that's, you know, that's, that stays with me. Like, I'm, I'm really not done with it yet. If I was done with it and I was searching for something else, but I, I'm going to give you a story, too. Like, I did interview for the Portland Trailblazers job. Like, it was a full-blown interview. And I took notes because I, I wanted, if, if there's another female that wanted to, to go that route. Like, I got the notes. I got what they asked. I got, I do. I, 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 I recorded it. Seriously, I did. So you was the feds. Yeah. <laughs> you was the ops. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, but a lot of it was analytics. Like, they, they're big into that. And then a lot of it was, they asked me questions like, you know, how would I handle a superstar? And it's like, I mean, I, I got superstars on my team now. Like, I treat them like people. Like, I really, I, there's a relationship. Like, it's, it's almost like, Recruiting. When you recruit a young lady, you're you want you want everybody. I want I want to talk to the parents. I want to talk to the boyfriend if they got a girlfriend. I want, I want to talk to everybody that's gonna have you know uh, it's gonna be in their ear. And I would pro approach it the same way. Like you know I know those guys don't like people in their space. They don't know who to trust. Well, I would try to get all the people that surround them that to create like a, a, a family atmosphere. I, I would, and I know it's hard to kind of envision that because you're, you're talking millionaires and all that. They're, they're people. When it comes down to it, they're, they want to get back close to what it's like to be normal. Um, and that's the part that, you know, the coaches that are very successful in the NBA or on any level, they know their players. They take time to, to, to talk to them they have lunch with them, they have dinner with them, they spend time and 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 that's you know what people want. I we 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 get to the point where we just we have a, like an emotional um relationship. You almost have to. But nowadays it's becoming really hard because of NIL. Mm. Like it's becoming more transactional um because players are going to do things that will help them win as far as money and it's it's a real thing i mean i i think it's cool like some coaches are like uh let's get rid of it no i'm like okay let's and then we, i just finished up at our our spring meetings where all the football coaches men's basketball women's basketball we're all you know we're all together and they're like what are we going to do about nil what are we going to do about the players how can we get it get it under control and i'm and i did i was in i was in a meeting with these presidents and i raise my hand. I'm just like, there's really nothing that we can do. The players have, they, they have all the juice. I'm like, well, how do we, how do we think ahead? Like, what can, where are some of the things that we can do as coaches and administrators to get ahead if we know that this is what the players want mm -mm. and this is what they're gonna get. Like, they got, they got all the juice. <laughs> they get the money. You know, they can transfer, they can do all these things, and there is nothing that we can do about it. And we, I'm okay with that, so, because I'm good at, I'm good on my feet. I'm really good on my feet. I'm good at pivoting. I'm good at, you know, foresight. I'm good at just doing something. And and I'm not telling them what I'm doing because I don't want them to, they, they, want probably, them to they probably got more resources than I do, especially <laughs> football and this basketball, uh-uh. But I'm, I'm gonna do something for South Carolina women's basketball that I think will be pretty innovative and um, what I think the future is gonna be for for where we are as as coaches and the people in this sport where where the players really get a chance to make decisions that you know for them. Mm. Well, I mean, and for people who aren't familiar, uh, NIL stands for Name, Image, and Likeness, and now. 
college players are able to make money off their name, image, and likeness. And it's been a game changer, especially for female athletes, yep. because it's, it's the women's uh, players that have like the popping Instagram accounts because they're so big on, on social media. Um, but al along those same lines, I mean, do you ever think about like, man, if I was playing today, I mean, you might've been able to make money off that like me asymmetrical haircut you used to have. <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> if anything, I would have been a stand-in for MC Light with my hair. Um, yeah, I, I probably could have. I could have yeah. made. I you you yeah. made some dough. I, I I could have, um, mm -hmm. you know. But I for 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 our players, like our, our players, honestly, NLI went into effect last July, like July 2021, and when we recruited. The players that are some of the players that are on our team now, like the rising seniors, they were talking about NIL like in our home visits. Like when I go to their home and we talk, so they're like, What about NIL? I'm yeah, like, I was gonna ask you, do you now yeah. our players just straight up that you recruit like, hey, how much money can I get? They wanna know. I, or make, you know, as I'm a part of your program. They, they wow. Do. They wanna know mm -hmm. like how how much? What what is it? What what can South how can South Carolina differentiate from you know, whatever other school. And, you know, I, I give them a little spiel, but at the same time, I'm like, what if you don't produce? You still want that money? Like, you <laughs> bet average, you a lot of crickets on that one. You're averaging 1.2, <laughs> right? <laughs> 1.2 points, no rebounds. You like 50% from the free throw line. Uh, like, what if you don't produce? They don't care about that now. <laughs> they, they don't, but. You know, it's conver it's like real conversation. Like that's how I talk to our players. Like, you know, if you you know, it's it. This was probably the hardest year. Not it wasn't hard. It was just different because I'm having like our end of the year uh, meetings with our players, and they're like, it's it's less about basketball and it's more about like popularity. Like, mm -hmm. like, you know. I feel like I can do more. I can be more popular. I can, if you allow me to do certain things. And I'm, I pull out that stat sheet and I'm just like, <laughs> do it. Like, <laughs> I, you, you get an opportunity. So, but again, I'm like, I'm probably not the coach for everybody. I really am not. Like, seriously, I'm not for everybody. If you can handle like real truth and real conversations and like you're not gonna like it, but you respect it. Like the players and I they tell me some of the some of their friends are like, how can you play for her? Like how because I'm just gonna I'm gonna tell it like it is. Like that's the only way that I know. I grew up in a household, youngest of five. I had a disciplined mother, like a, she was a disciplinarian. Like she was she didn't play. So, and I'm more like that. I mean, I have fun and all of that, but this, there, this, it's a business. If you're trying to grow and learn and do some things as a young adult, like right now, these are some life lessons. And I do, I do feel like this too. Young people measure your love like, their par like to their parents. And I have to tell them like, I'm very different than your parents because your parents don't want you to fail and they don't want you to be uncomfortable. They do everything in their power to make sure you don't feel the pain that they felt growing up. And it's, it's probably the biggest mistake because they're gonna fail. I tell them I love you enough to allow you to fail. I do, I love you enough to allow you to hurt. I love you enough for you to have a bad game or bad month or even a bad season. Because if you're trying to get to the next level, you're gonna have those days. And if you can't, if you can't operate in that space, then you're not gonna be at that next level. And that's not just basketball, that's just anything. You're gonna have bad days that you're gonna have to just fight through because the competition is waiting. They're waiting for you to fail so they can scoop in and, and take your raise or take your space. And that's what I try to prepare our players for. I'm wondering though if some of this is like a little generational, because like mm -hmm. you know you and I are, are are close in age, and 
I have a lot of younger journalists that come up to me all the time and they say, um, how can I build my brand? I hate that question. <laughs> oh my God, I was like, well, first of all, stop, you're not a brand. Uh -huh. How you gonna have a brand, you don't have a product. Mm -hmm. Like, you got, like it, it doesn't work that way. You do the work, the work becomes the brand, right? And so um, I'm glad that you confirmed that I'm not the only one who thinks that way. And I was like, they think I'm being mean, but I'm not. I'm trying to, to tell you, like, if you do the work, the rest of it that you want will come. You know, I, I can't talk like that to them. <laughs> I yeah, I know. <laughs> I You're like, I got to get gotta, them to my campus. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I got to tell them, yeah, OK, what's, you know, what do you I got to go through the whole? What do you like? OK, what is it? And then and then I set them up and then they got to go do the, they got to go do the work. But you do have to take them through every single step. And then and and then their parents take over and then they're they're off. Like I got a, a text message. The parents like, um, my child gonna be home on August the sixth, cause they got something to they got something to do. Like, well they got summer school. They got they got all these things. She is gonna be home August the sixth, but it's that's how they think. It's more of a business, and and I don't mind that at all, as long as it doesn't interfere with the sanctity of our team. Mm -hmm. Um, when did you know that coaching was your destiny? I, I didn't. Okay, when did I know? Like, I don't really look at myself as a coach. That's weird. It's weird. I don't. Like, like I, I, I look at myself as, I've said this before, like, just being a dream merchant. I'm, I'm so, like, full of what basketball has done for me. Like, like, like my cup runneth over when it comes to, like the game and how I look at it and how, how what it's done for me and the debt that I'm just trying to repay. So it's almost like me repaying a debt that is so, like I'm, I'm comfortable, like I'm, I'm really comfortable in who I am and how I can help young people. So it's more like just being a, a servant for mm -hmm. young people. Mm -hmm. So you don't, I mean, do you look at yourself as more of like a leader as opposed to maybe a coach or maybe not even that? Um, I, I just look at myself as, as doing the right thing. And I just so happen to have a title as a coach. <laughs> but if I wasn't a coach, I would be working some, I would be working with young people somewhere to help them figure out what they, you know, what they want to do in life.